Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today is a very exciting day and somewhat of a sad day. It is the start of our very last unit of AP Human Geography. Today we start unit seven. In this video, we're gonna be looking at unit seven, topic one, the industrial revolution. It's kind of crazy to actually think about this. It seems like just yesterday we were talking about maps and diffusion and the cultural landscape. And here we are at the end. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, by the way, what are you doing? If you've watched all these videos, hit that subscribe subscribe button, share this video, and with that, let's get started learning about our wonderful Unit 7. Now, the Industrial Revolution has come up throughout this entire course. Here we can see that new technologies were introduced to society that revolutionized the production of goods and services, transformed our agricultural production, changed migration patterns, reshaped society's population growth rates, and led to countries to interact with one another on the world stage. The Industrial Revolution started in Britain in the 1700s, partially due to the amount of coal and iron ore that the British had access to. During this time, we saw coal used to power the steam engine for trains, ships, and also factories. Eventually, the technologies from the Industrial Revolution spread to the United States and throughout the rest of Europe and the world. The Industrial Revolution transformed how society produced products. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, many of our products that we had in society were produced by hand, oftentimes in cottage industries. These industries were located in people's homes. The work was pretty labor intensive as people did everything by hand. It was slow to produce and also inefficient. The new technologies introduced in the Industrial Revolution ended up destroying cottage industries as we now have more efficient ways to produce products. This motivated workers who had lost their jobs to move to urban areas and search for new opportunities in the city. In economics, we call this phenomenon creative destruction. This is when a new technology comes in and destroys an old industry. In the short run, it can cause pain, as we'll see people lose their jobs. Their skills are no longer needed in society. But in the long run, we can see new opportunities created for society as a whole, and oftentimes more economic development will occur. Today, we can see examples of creative destruction with companies like Netflix that completely changed how we rent and consume digital entertainment. Gone are the days of going into blockbusters or Mr. Movies to rent a film. Some people even speculate we might be seeing creative destruction destruction happen again in the space of coal with energy. As more and more countries start to switch to green energy, coal power plants may become obsolete. Or we might be seeing this with the trucking industry. If self-driving autonomous cars and semi-trucks become available, will we see that industry no longer needed as companies switch over to self-driving semis? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Now, it wasn't just economics that changed due to the Industrial Revolution, but culture as well. Families no longer were all working at home. Now, families were working in the factories. And thanks to advancements in technology, factories could operate 24 hours a day. This changed family lifestyle. And we can see this new urban area also had an impact on culture. As more and more families became busier, we saw the rise of segregation in cities. We also saw the rise of class systems and the rise of consumerism. As people had more access to wealth, they wanted to purchase more goods. This led to the creation of more goods and services. As we started to see the economy reshape itself. If we turn our focus over to agriculture, we can see how the Industrial Revolution transformed the field of agriculture. It led to the Second Agricultural Revolution and also the enclosure movement. This transformed how we produced food. We saw the introduction of new farming practices. We saw new technologies used to increase crop yields. We saw more food production and also a greater food surplus, which allowed us to have more specialization and also changed our migration again as we saw more people move into urban areas areas, as there was less farmers needed due to the benefits of the increased food production. We can also see that the Industrial Revolution's changes to society required a lot of raw resources. We can see that European countries used colonialism and their colonies in order to make sure they had enough raw resources and markets to also sell some of these new products. Resources such as iron, cotton, rubber, diamonds, tea, and wood became in high demand. And with advancements in the steam engine, we could see countries now could trade around the world and had access to more markets than ever before. This led to the further development of ports being built in colonies, new technology being used to create canals, railroads, and infrastructure, all to support global trade. Remember back to our political unit when we were talking about colonialism and imperialism and the scramble for Africa, where we saw European powers use their influence over Africa to benefit their own economies. They needed those raw resources in order to continue their economic growth. If you need a 
refresher on some of those concepts, go back and check out some of the Unit 4 videos. As you can see, the Industrial Revolution truly did revolutionize the world. We can see concepts from this topic in Unit 7 connect to almost every single unit in our class. It's kind of like the greatest hits of our topics. We've talked about agriculture, culture, we've looked at population, migration, we've also talked about our political unit in here. The Industrial Revolution was major and it changed our society forever. And now comes the time though that we need to practice. Take a couple of minutes now and answer the questions on the screen right now. When you think you got the answers, go down into the comments section and check your answers. Make sure you got them right. And when you're down there checking your answers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also check out my ultimate review packet. You can find a link for it in the description of this video. It is a great resource that'll help you in your class and also help you on that national exam. All right, geographers, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching this. And until next time, I'll see you guys online.